Ah yes, the traditional year beginning, absurdly long title. Mario's at the subway ordering a footlong tuna with mayo. But the fish employee says they're out of so he goes in the kitchen to produce more by sacrificing their own kind. I once heard that crab patties were once made out of chum which is fish, so it really isn't really that surprising. The Paisiano is busted for seeing that unfold and tries to run away, but gets caught and sent down to the appropriate name Subway. Subway. They do give him his sandwich, but without the covenant he asked for. Bob, Tari, and Wimple arrive at the restaurant and Mario overhears Bob's order, thinking they could help him out. So he uses a farm animal to toy to get their attention, luring Tari and Wimple into the kitchen. They get trapped on the ground as well, and now have to deal with their friend's predicament. The gang travels to the tunnel of death where the sacred mayonnaise lies. I promise you, you were still talking about sandwiches. After several traps involving doom monsters, a giant meatball monster cheats uh, that resembles the mad piano. In a Yu-Gi-Oh match, Mario can finally have his sub with mayo, but the employees catch him again and force them to work at Subway HQ without pay, which makes for great PR. They try to do their jobs making up for the damages, but it goes downhill when Mario misses with the printer unleashing a chain jump, Cuphead, Baldi, <laughs> and Paper Mario copies, setting the office in chaos. They're set it, sent to the CEO's office, and surprise, surprise, it's Boopkin's dad. I was afraid it was going to be someone whose name rhymes with Baron Mongol. He's upset with them messing up his business, and they run away again after the chump lands on his tentacle. They find his son, and his secret job turns out to be goofing off at HQ. Joe spots them, but Bukin says to let them go, and I want his friend's harm. So the three are sent back to the kitchen, and Mars spreads the mayonnaise, may mayo in his sub, but he realizes there's too much and just leaves, making Tari and Wimpu speechless. I guess that sandwich wasn't so fresh after all. 7.5 out of 10, much like last year's first video, the script is based on a regular idea turned insane, delivering on the show standards for humor along with fast paced action and the character's teamwork. But it isn't as strong episode in terms of what's really possible. Bob deserves a bigger role instead of the one he got, and his motives were, were to be similar to Mario's evolving sandwiches. Looks like we're off to a fine start. Nothing much else to say, but eat fresh, folks. Just don't put too much mayo. selling hot dogs and Luigi's interested for other reasons besides hunger biting into one he faints because Mario put too much salt fan base salt that is <laughs> oh man nobody's gonna live that down are they then there's this bee flying near him spooky Mario he tries to shoo it away but couldn't and runs to the castle Luigi wakes up and sees it hitting inside as well the bug is behind them and Mario fights it like a Pokemon, but they take shelter in SMG4's room. Tyre and Glitchy are playing Smash and see the brothers scared out of their minds. Tyre sees the beef fighting her as well, but the meme Lim League is taking a break from their overreacting. The three look to see where he went, believing the bee ate him somehow. Tyre distracts it with a copy of the B movie game, and it looks like it has the hearts for Barry B. Benson. She throws it out the window thinking that solved the problem, but the bee goes back inside where Axel, Bob, and Melanie are watching Two Piece. Axel asks Melanie about his show, but she's not being, making him forlorn. You'll get there someday, dude. The insect lands on his groin, Bob notices and kicks him to the kill it, but misses. 
The two run away from it, and Axel locks the door to the second floor, but forgot about Melanie, so he goes back to rescue her. But she has the bug on her hands rather innocently, screwing them over. Then Maggie, Psycho, and Bootkins arrive, taking notice of the commotion. Laugh at their nonsense and the fight the B Persona style to get rid of it. But they under underestimated it, their threat. Calling the guards for help, later Swag and Chris try to eliminate it at the ground floor, but also panic. See, as seeing as they're no help either, the whole group is doomed. SMG4 comes back to see what they're still embarrassing themselves. He takes out his saxophone and plays a banging tune, luring the bee back to its hive. Everyone cheers about their safety, but Glitchy taps the tree and the hive falls down in his head. Oops. 10 out of 10, this is a great video. I'm not joking. Yes, it does borrow from Spongebob episode. That being war warm heat. But I explained this before. Making another version of plot doesn't mean they're copying it from scene from scene. I appreciate the cast variety, the most of if you don't know me that well. But the contrary to what others think, all the characters aren't used here as some as are left out. The best moments are the battle scenes, the guards, little mesh app, and the song SMG4 plays at the end. However, it didn't stop Mario from collecting salt from his hot dogs. I, I will explain this problem yet again in this next video. Well, here we are. No use turning back now. Mario's exercising with what we fit trainer, but aliens arrive to attack the castle. They order Mario to resurrect their fallen leader, who happens to be his late pet, Greg. Mario, Bob, Maggie, and Tara receive special powers and travel to the alien's planet to order to save their own. They pass their ferocious space battles and traps until they arrive at the temple. As they find the spot to revive Greg, they need a volunteer to activate the ritual, and Bob takes the position. He turns powerful and is used his magic on the lifeless extraterrestrial. But it backfires when he gets possessed and, and attacks the crew. So they knock down the pillars and Greg once again dies. Mario is upset his friend couldn't come back. So is Maggie for getting her hopes up possibly alluding to someone she was fond of. Tari says reviving the dead isn't something anyone should be doing, especially if they're resting peacefully. But Mario has those bobs to try again, since they still live on Earth to save, but it abruptly ends. There's a bunch to unpack from this, so let's get this out of the way. Certain fans believe the video was going about Maggie wanting Desti to come back, but only the two scenes hint at the idea, and they gave up to her name, so those little moments couldn't about anything. Here's what I think happened. Look in the crew must have wanted to tell these guys the message that Desi's presence already served the de development of Maggie's character, so there's no need to bring her back in the flesh. It would be canceled out a good proportion of the enemy's art storyline as well as the reason why their f first movie exists. These worshippers had their chance to move on in this episode reminding them of that. But of course, their desire for Splatoon content in this show and nowhere else rages on. It's really depressing that this group of people don't care about the videos these creators have actually been making for years. And saw this particular one as they attack, which violates bullying the creators. And according to people who think emotional stuff doesn't belong in SMG4, Greg Steph in a revival was also forced, even though me and others know he wasn't an amazing character and wasn't portrayed as seriously as Disney. So those two, those who claim they care about the facts but not the feelings, what are you doing wasting your time with something you know you're gonna hate? It's very clear that you don't belong on the internet as cyberbullying through this fandom is your calling. So keep thinking I hate opinions and I'm secure about the show's oversaturated flaws because I don't care. Now that's over with. This video actually ends with a cliffhanger which implies a new arc or two parter is on the way. 
At the time of writing this review, this has yet to be confirmed, so does this mean um, Earth is doomed if they're unable to bring aliens later back? Or was this as a one-off just to teach a lesson that should have gone through people's minds by now? Because the next episode seems completely unrelated. Capping off this segment, this video still offers some entertainment, action, humor, and teamwork which may as well be overlooked by the subtext people are taking too seriously. So this gets an 8 out of 10. Only time will tell if this gets a follow up or not. Just hope it will be accidentally released early this time. Axel prepares himself to go ask Melanie to be his Valentine, but she's watching his show again. He tries to get her attention, but it's glued to the TV screen. She takes a nap, prompting Axel to make a special episode out of jealousy for his own creation, one where Melanie's favorite character dies. The canvasity of this enemy is surely up in the air. However, Melanie doesn't take kindly to seeing her kind getting smashed, let alone eaten by Toad. Axel foolishly asks if she enjoyed the show, but he's later taken to court. Melanie angrily accuses him of murder, that being the watermelon he broke. And Maggie orders Axel to not speak with her again. Devastating the salamander, Melanie dis then decides to hang out with Bob, influencing Axel's jealousy. So he tries to redeem himself from his punishment while getting her to avoid any moves. Bob will make. After a bunch of failed attempts, Axel drags Bob tricking him into showing two-piece hentai. Who hasn't tried something similar? And instead of taking him out psycho style, he offers a piece of cake to help him get her back. Bob understands and is glad to be his wingman. Boy am I getting some Mordecai and Rigby vibes here. As Melly naps on a spaghetti plate to which Mario is gleefully about to strip, Axel arrives in a low rider to impress her. Being Bob's idea, it doesn't work since the swag is too much for her to handle, so she flees. Later she's on top of the McDonald's sign and Axel tries to apologize for traumatizing her with the help of Mario and Bob's backup chorus. Surprisingly, it's not to immediately start dating, but to repair the friendship, Ronald's disturbed by the commotion, so he shakes Melanie off his sign, and Axel catches her. Melanie agrees to reconcile, and the two dance in celebration to Mario and Bob's show too. Instead of kicking them out of his restaurant, Ronald films their good time to turn into a commercial. I'm sure one of the official Twitter accounts in the world would tweet this eventually. 10 out of 10, I couldn't for the life of me enjoy this one so much. Axel's shenanigans were surprisingly interesting and despite not being romantic, it serves as purpose as a Valentine's special. Only gripe is the thumbnail is somewhat misleading, but the title? Not as much since felony refers to Axel's crime of uh, smashing a watermelon. The characters in spite of what others would say make for a decent interaction, though Melanie's ditzy ways are still finding their footy. Plus, this applies to the non-Mario-centric stuff, the show needs to be fresh, since he appears in three scenes that he doesn't impact the story in. Most of the jokes are hilarious, and the pacing is solid. And, oh, and two of those who believe relationship episodes are here a crime against nature. Explain this, please. I mean, have, have this video started a pre-existing couple from the Mario games, such you wouldn't have cared. You're probably typing some contrived reasoning for why that was handled better right now. Remind me, I still like the whole video, so don't bother convincing me. I didn't fuck my cat, I didn't come on my cat, I didn't put my dick anywhere near my cat. I've never done anything weird with my cat. I promised myself I wasn't going to make apology videos after last year's day. So I'm just trying to be a sort and honest with this as For 
were we expecting this? Yes, we were, but not the way yeah, anyone expected. One day at the play directed by Mario based on the movie I wish we forgot, Bowser's excited to see his son act in it, but question his life choices once it starts. Junior starts singing a song dedicated to his dad, which he tries to tune out with some online food, commercial not included, but they misspelled his name and snaps transforming into his furry form. The whole show stops and Bowser goes on a rampage, accidentally taps the gigabell causing him to go deaf for a few seconds. Mario sees it and tries to get it himself, but Bowser doesn't let him by painting over it so Mario can't transform. As Bowser wrecks havoc in the city, Mario tries to clean the bell but no cigar. So Bowser Jr. tags along and tells him not to go far. But Mario says there is a way to do to his low IQ. They go to the Cat Kingdom to get the bell washed by Oscar. Yes, that Oscar. But they need enough cash on his so they search for them while Bowser chases Bookin, screwing him over by singing in Cat Girl, which made him bigger. They get the cat shines by sniping a bully, distracting the cat bills by drawing Bob, and racing Bob the cat frying pussy in the process. Will Smithfish uses them to buy a soda. Of course he does. And quickly cleans the Giga Bell. Mario transforms into a Super Saiyan and takes on his furious foe. As Mario is winning, he asks everyone to lend their cat energy. And they do, even Swag and Chris. Mario successfully defeats Furry Bowser and he goes back to normal. He doesn't remember what happened and Junior is relieved to see his dad back. Things are fighting until Bowser watches the play he somehow recorded, and instead of destroying the phone, Mario runs away. 8 out of 10. This is a pretty good take on the game. There's jokes I like and laugh at. Mario and Junior's chemistry is decent. Wow, that's something I thought I'd never say for some reason. And the battle scenes is impressive. The issue is I have is that the models don't replicate the game very well. I understand this because Bowser's Fury is a new release, and they don't have the time to gather the resources with their schedule. But I'm pretty sure the Ca Cat Mario model has been out for years now, since the game is still a port. And if you're surprised, this video performed better than the last two. Remember that the algorithm favors trending topics, and Bowser's Fury is of course one of them. And the few counts are not not based on quality. Trust me, I know someone who deserves much less views because of that. The almighty queen of YouTube holds a fighting tournament for her servants. Why? Maybe it's because everyone forgot about Logan Paul's m boxing matches. Whoever's eliminated gets their career deleted. Out of fear, SMG Red doesn't want to risk deletion again, so he asks Mario to fight for his ass. They make a deal about glitchy making pasta for a week, but Mario needs to be prepared for the event first, which sparks Maggie's attention. Mario gets flashbacks of his pink gun days. When she offers him training and ferociously leaves her behind, he doesn't realize that it's hand to hand combat and not a turf war. So, why did he ignore for his friend? Either because he was tired of her training style or his IQ took a slightly bigger nosedive. Who the hell knows? So, Mario is aided by Doc Louie taking a break from his lower tier apprentice. Maggie tries to get her friend's attention by attempting to help him focus on training. But Mario doesn't thank her for everything that happened since it turns out he's capable of defending himself even though he still hired a trainer. By that I'm not so sure what's on Mario's mind. Did he need a break from me or did he want to prove that he can do it mostly on his own? It's never explicitly stated. A week later the tournament begins and Mario squares off against the following contestants. Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, Keemstar, I hate that guy. And that Minecraft dude, whose fan base makes the SNG community look like a paradise. It's the final round, and he takes on the grand champion, PewDiePie. 
right before the match ends, Mario tricks Felix into saying a certain word that makes Susan immediately disqualify him out of rage. His channel is suspended, which please Coco Moon sadly. And Mario wins in the event by default. The YouTubers who lost are let off easy with one strike each. Only the real Susan W will follow her rules so consistently. Everyone cheers for the plumber and parties back at the castle. Except for Maggie who walks home, she questions her usefulness not having helped her companion win and not landing a job judging by her chalkboard. One of those jobs happened to be the cross out for obvious reason. Right, America? It seems Maggie is stuck in a rut, still searching for a purpose a year after she won the final event of her former sport. Before she goes to bed, a warm host suddenly appears in the living room rather inexplicably. But it goes away after Bob barges in to throw an after party for some reason freaking her out. 9 out of 10. This is a pretty good take on content creators battling each other to the death. Going into this, I was expecting something related to the announcement of Megan's upcoming series, which Luke has been teasing for a while, and the ending does a hint of that. But at the time of writing and re revising these reviews, the actual show has yet to be shown, and it being linked to the SMG4 universe, other being its own separate thing, like Meta Runner, has yet to be confirmed. The hints of her leaving the group for a vacation are always over there, but this could be false, which is why I don't jump to conclusions when it comes to stuff like this. Another problem so called critics are reviewing his 4 videos. By the time I release this video, I'm sure they might have made a real announcement and given my actual thoughts from there. Bearing questions that I have to answer, the rest of the video is still a fun ride through more of Susan's tyrannical hatred since the battle scenes are entertaining. The problem lies within Mario's decision to decline Maggie's help, make him slightly more selfish than usual. Or it implies Maggie being needy for attention. It makes sense considering where she is at the moment, but other than that, representing her past shots, briefly her situation could have been better emphasized. So the end result is on the way. We will have to see what Maggie's next chapter leads to, assuming you're not a joke who's still calling them sell sellouts. Well, the, that was another lengthy one, wasn't it? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here after everything these past two months, remember that I do appreciate the support from these videos. If you help by sharing them among your friends and like the community that does care about long running channels, please stay safe, wear a mask, and get your vaccine if you can. And as always, peace out. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul.